And to start with, before you actually start playing the match, you have to realize that high-level players um, have a correct psychological approach to playing matches. If you don't have match play in the right perspective, you're going to put a lot more pressure on yourself and you're probably not going to play as well. So let's talk a little bit about how high performance athletes uh, look at match play. Okay. In first place, and this, this sort of sounds a little weird the first time you, you think about it, but good athletes already have accepted the fact that they're going to lose sometime. That's part of the sport. You know, they're not afraid to lose. Losing and winning are part of their improvement and their development. Even the world champion loses from time to time. Yeah. What's important is that they've already accepted the fact that they could lose and they're not afraid to lose. And this allows them to really play at their full potential, especially in tight situations at ends of matches. They're not afraid to go for the correct shot or their best shot. Um, they're not afraid to lose. And because they're not afraid of losing, they actually win more. And that's a little trick of the mind that you really have got to get into. Uh, the other thing about match play is that high performers understand that all matches and tournaments are not equal. A lot depends on where you are in your training. Um, for instance, at the world championships, you know, a month or two months before the world championship, you will see like Ma Long losing matches because he is not in, that's not the event he's planning for, or he's trying to peak for. He's using those preliminary tournaments to get ready for the big tournament. And he understands that if he takes a loss in those tournaments, it's only going to make him better for the tournament that he's actually preparing for. So not all tournaments are necessarily equal. If you're early in the season and you're still getting yourself into shape and whatever, that tournament's probably not as important as the national championships you're preparing for for four or five months. Um, so you have to have a little bit of a longer term goal, a longer term view of where you are and how important those matches are and how important that tournament is. It doesn't mean that you're not trying to win, that you're not trying to play your absolute best, but you have to understand that you're not going to be in your peak performance in every single tournament you play in, especially if you play a lot, if you play in a lot of tournaments. The other thing that good players understand is that match play is an evaluation not of how good the player is, but how good the training was leading up to the tournament. Coaches, when we coaches, we use tournaments to see how good our training is and our preparation is. And if we don't get the results we want, we have to go back and we have to find some ways to make that training better the next time around. But it's not, Good players don't take it personally. Just because you lose a match doesn't mean that you're a bad player or that you're not doing well or that in some way you are diminished as a person. <laughs> and this is an important thing. I remember when I was young, I really um, had a problem with this personally. Um, if I had a good tournament, then I was in a – an emotional high afterwards for a period of time. And it was great. If I had a bad tournament, I had a really hard time, you know, getting over that because I felt diminished as a, as a person. And you can't let that happen. You know, a sport is not, has nothing to do with how your value as a human being or, you know, whether somebody's going to like you or not, or any of those different things. All it is, all a match is, is an evaluation of how your training went. And if you keep that in mind, again, you're going to take some pressure off yourself. High-performance athletes learn from each 
win or loss, and then they quickly forget it. One of the main attributes of a good at player is that they don't hold on to losses. You know, you can, I can remember so many times an athlete would have an early loss, say in a round robin, still advance and win the tournament because he didn't let the loss linger, didn't bother him. Just learned from it, went on and did better. And finally, high performance athletes actually enjoy competing. They like to compete. They like to fight. Yeah. I've known a lot of players that like to train and they like before the match and after the match and they don't like the match. <laughs> they don't like the, the fight. And you really have got to enjoy that. That's, that's what we're training for is the actual match. And the other thing finally is high level athletes, ex you know, respect the opponent because without the opponent, you have no one that's going to help you improve or to learn. And that means you have to respect opponents you don't like yeah. and opponents who play a style you don't like there. You have to remember they're giving you an opportunity to improve yourself, to learn how to play against a difficult player. Who's maybe not nice on the table or learn how to play a style that you don't like to play. So every opponent is valuable to you and you, you have to learn to respect that. These are common attributes in the way that good players think about match play. And it's important that you have a good process before you start playing the matches. You have to take the pressure off yourself. You can't be afraid of losing. You can't, uh, you have to understand where you are and you're training for the year. What's important to you as far as whether or not that those, this tournament is your main tournament you've been working for or not. You have to let go of defeats and learn from defeats and victories. And you have to enjoy the competition. We'll take questions at the end of this. So if you have a question, sort of remember it. Yeah. Now, high performance during match when you're playing somebody you don't know. I mean, obviously, if it's impossible, you'd like yourself or your coach to get a look at the player going in so you have some information. But sometimes that's not possible. So what do you do? Well, you want to start off playing your favorite tactics, but you also want to test your opponent early, and you want to test them in a couple different ways. First, you want to make you want to try different locations for serve and serve return, and this is very important. And what often I don't see in young players is that they tend to serve to one place, <laughs> and it drives me crazy because players, all players, can have difficult times with either movement to a location or different positions that they don't like to receive the ball in. Yeah. If you never experiment, especially early in the match, with different locations, and we'll talk about this late after this presentation, I'll show you another slide, but you really need to see where people can move. And movement issues are a main weakness that many players have. And if you don't make them move, you'll never know. The other thing you want to, to find out early is whether or not you're dominant in the backhand to backhand exchange. Yeah. And this is really an important concept because the way our sport is structured, our game is structured, 80% of the first attacks from any athlete will go to the other person's backhand. And from there, 85% come back to the backhand. So our game, this is with two right-handed players now. Let me, let me say that. Yeah. So what you have is a game that is built around the backhand to backhand exchange. If you dominate that exchange, then basically you, you can play your game without making hardly any changes because you're dominating the, the main exchange between the two players. 
Now, if the other person is winning the points on the back end of back end exchanges, then you have to make an adjustment. It may be that you play one ball to the back end and one ball into the body, okay? but you don't keep going to the back end or maybe one ball to the forehand okay? or change the rhythm of the stroke. But if you're winning the back end, the back end, then your opponent's got to change his game. And that's not easy. It's not an easy thing to do. So two things I want to know right away, or I try and encourage my players to do right away, is serve and serve return to different locations and to get some backhand exchanges in to see whether or not you can control that. Yeah. Now, as your match, your game progresses, both of you are going to start getting used to each other and start making adjustments. Yeah. So you need to try and keep your opponent from getting used to your game and making adjustments. So again, if you're unpredictable with your serve placements and your serve returns, and every point starts with a serve or serve return. So if you're unpredictable with those locations and spins, then you're also going to make it more difficult for your opponent to adjust. But basically, you're trying to get as many of your stronger, your favorite strokes or tactics into play as you can and try and find where the weakness is for the opponent and try and break them down that way, either in the back end of back end exchange or in the movement that you'll see weaknesses on your serve and serve returns to them. All right, Coach Humphreys also asked me to talk about playing against a player you've never beaten, but you're always playing close. And that can be a very frustrating thing. What I like to do with my players when they have that situation is I really want them to do some visualization either before the tournament or before the match. We we'll pull them off to the side and let them take a couple minutes and almost daydream if you want to think of it that way. Put some images in the mind of them beating this player. And you have to understand the power of the mind. That's very, very important. The mind works on images. It doesn't really know the difference between reality and the image that you put into mind. So you, you don't have the experience of beating this player, but if you visualize yourself beating this player, you actually can gain the same type of confidence, your mind will, that it would have if it actually beat the player on the table. To do a visualization, you want to make sure that you make it as real as possible. You want to visualize what the player is wearing, with the sound of the ball, what the table feels like, what the racket feels like in your hand. And spend a couple minutes, you know, visualizing the end of a match and that you're hitting your favorite shot and you're winning the match. Get your confidence up. Probably the most important thing to remember when you're playing somebody close is you don't have to do anything completely different to win the match. All you need to do is to elevate your overall play maybe 3%, 5%. It's a small increase. The difference between winning and losing is very small. So, you know, you could be losing matches at 11-9, 11-9, and you improve just a little bit the quality of your serve, the quality of your first spin, just a few percent. And you can change that to 11-5 year win. It doesn't take huge changes in your game. What it really requires is that you, you, you're obviously playing fairly correctly, tactically, or you wouldn't be close. You just need to do everything a little better, a little better placement on the serve and the serve return, a little better quality of first attack, and keep it simple, work focus on the first three shots of the game and try and play your strong shots as much as you can. 
but you don't have to make huge changes in your game all of a sudden. Well, I can't attack. I'm going to play defense or block or whatever. Play your game. Just do it. Try and do everything a little bit better. I'm going sort of fast. If I go too fast, you guys say something, slow me down. <laughs> we have about Again, eight. I think what I want to do is sort of... We have I'm about sorry? eight minutes left. Uh, then we, we, we'll take some questions, right? We have to make sure persons get... Only eight questions. minutes? Yeah, eight minutes, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Okay, well, then I got to go fast. <laughs> playing, the, playing as a top seed in the preliminary matches, okay? Important to realize the main difference in levels of play is really most often technique. If you're the top seed in a group, the reason you're the top seed is that your technique is better. Your serve, particularly your serve and serve return is better. And also realize that weaker players often have movement issues that are keeping them at a lower level. So again, you want to use your serve and serve return placement to look for the weak areas of movement. You want to, main thing here is don't overplay. You should be able to beat the players below you simply with really focus on your serve and serve return and just getting a good quality first attack on the table in a good location. The hard part of this is that you tend to lose focus when you're playing lower players. And when you lose focus, you stop paying attention, that's when you get nervous. If you really focus on what you're doing, on your serve, your serve return, and your first attack, the more you focus, the less nervous you're going to be. So again, the, the battle really is to focus to win every game at 11-0 if you can. Get off the table. Don't goof around, mess around, lose your focus, and then get upset. So it's actually more of a mental thing than anything else. Importance of towel breaks. Cow breaks give you a little time to reset yourself mentally. Normally, we try and teach people to do some relaxation technique, a little breathing while you're doing that. Get a plan in your mind for the next points, and also look at your coach, because you can receive instruction now at any time, and towel breaks are a perfect time. You can't walk over to the coach, but look at the coach. He may have something to tell you. Use of serves in a game, match, okay? The location of your serve can limit the location of your opponent's return, all right? And the type and amount of spin on your serve is going to be used to set up your third ball attack. And serve, different serves serve different purposes for setting up different kinds of attack. If you're just trying to take a first attack, a safe attack, start the point, but you want to make sure you're the first attacker, normally short serves with more than one spin. Usually back spin with side spin. Side spin influences your opponent to return to one half of the table or the other half of the table. So you have some idea where the ball is coming. If you're looking for a final stroke, you want to go for a power shot. Now you're going to use short serves normally with just one spin. Why? Because you want the ball coming back straight so you can take a swing at it. You don't want a ball curving. So short serves with heavy back spin, no spin, <coughs> a little top spin, or even a fast, unexpected long serve can give you a weak return. Third ball for counterattack, and we see more and more counterattack today's game. Two bounce serves, where the second bounce lands right at the end of the service uh, table line, okay, which forces the opponent to swing up instead of forward, or even an une 
expected fast backspin serve or deviated serve, one that jumps. Okay. These give you a weaker first attack from your opponent that you can counterattack. So in practice, you know, you're always trying to find what serves work for each of you, depending on how you attack, whether you attack backhand or forehand. Everybody has their own way of attacking. Yeah. Um, you need to know what serves you're going to give depending on what tactic you're trying to do. Are you just trying to take control of the point with the initiative? You're trying to end the point with a power shot, or you're trying to invite the player to attack weakly so you can counterattack. But those are all linked, yeah, and you have to practice them like that. Service return, how to deal with difficult serves, all right? Couple keys, you're having problems, you're not returning serve, you're getting frustrated with your opponent's serve. What do you do? First thing, physically, <coughs> lower your body. You're gonna move better. If you get your eyes down to a lower level, you can see the curve on the ball better. If your eyes are high, you're looking down on the ball, it's very hard to see with the spin on the ball. The lower you can get your eyes, and you'll see good players almost look like they have their eyes at table height right, when they're receiving. Always anticipate the serve will go long and react to the short serve because the short serve is slow. You have time to react to it. If you set up for the short serve and the ball comes deep, you're going to have big problems. The main thing is you get nervous about somebody's spin, you tend to get a dead hand and just touch the ball. And that spin's going to jump all over the place. It's just like putting your racket on the table and spinning a ball at it and watching the ball jump off the racket. You have to have an active hand and apply pressure to the ball. Okay? You have to tighten your grip to keep the ball on the racket. Use your opponent's side spin when returning his side spin. That will help you return it. Focus, and here's the big thing I tell my players. Forget about your opponent's great serve. Focus on your serve. You win your serve points, you can't lose. <laughs> it's just that simple. Take the pressure off. <clears throat> Don't get frustrated with his serve. In fact, play around with his serve. Try all different kinds of returns until you find what works. As long as you're still winning your own serve, you're fine. But what happens is people get so dominated with the other person's serve that they start losing all their points on their serve because they're not thinking about it. They're only thinking about the opponent's serve. And it has to be the opposite. You have to relax on their serve, try different returns, and really focus on your serve and being really tough on your serve. Okay, Coach Humphreys. All right, excellent. How am I doing? Uh, you're, you're, <laughs> open your, you're 30 minutes. It's 30, 30 minutes, 33 seconds. So, say just 33 seconds over. All right, so um, you, you want to just summarize to finish off? Well, I, we just went over a huge amount of material, actually. Right. And now, I sent you some supporting documents. Great. And... If you can be kind enough to sort of email those or send those out to the participants, yep. um, including this presentation, that they have a little more time to sit and, and sort of take it in. Right. Um, learning how to play matches is real important, but also learning to take the pressure off yourself in the matches, that very first slide with how good players think about match play. Enjoy it. Understand that all it is is showing you how your training is going. Okay, it's not something personal. And you, as if you can take it like that, then you're going to have more fun in the tournament, and you're going to win more matches. Uh, excellent. Uh, I'm hoping that some persons will will pose some questions. But for now, I know for. Uh, young players, and I can remember um, also in my playing career, a lot of times when we reach uh, to 10 in matches, 
we completely forget strategy. Uh, sometimes we look to finish fancy, and sometimes we, we just hope that the opposition makes that mistake. Uh, what, what's the best advice uh, when we reach uh, to 10 before opposition? The big question is always, do I go for, do I go for a winner? Or do I try and let the opponent miss? Right. A lot of that is emotional. Yeah. Um, in general, if you feel nervous, and this may sound strange to you, but if you feel nervous, you're better off going for a shot as quickly as possible in the point. <coughs> serve, and, serve and go for a winner. Simply because when you take a big swing and you're aggressive, you're, you're reacting instinctively. The nerves don't really play a point that much. Right. However, if you're nervous and you're trying to play a short, delicate ball, like a drop shot or a, you know, a, 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 a placement uh, or even a block, okay, right. um, it's hard to control the short game, particularly when you're nervous. And just opposite, it's good to try and think about how the opponent is looking too. If the opponent is looking very confident, walking around very active, um, then you, you have a feeling that they're, they're willing to rally. Okay. If the opponent is shrugging his shoulders, if they're not moving much, if they're saying anything negative, um, that's a player that you really want to make play a short ball. Right. You give them that short serve or that drop shot because they're more than likely going to be nervous and have problems with it. What you don't want to do if your opponent is nervous, you don't want to give them a deep ball right away and let them swing. So it's really sort of an evaluation of how you feel. Do you feel like you, if you feel confident and you think the other person is nervous, play short and make them rally the ball. Okay. If you feel nervous, Better off going for a shot. Good question. Okay. <laughs> Excellent answer. All right, so we will open up for, for questions so persons can unmute your mics and you all are free to ask questions. Who will be the first? Don't be, be shy. No right, young players are on questions so. yet, but congratulations, Mr. McAfee. Yes, Simon, could you repeat your question? Yeah. No, I said no questions yet, but I wanted to congratulate Mr. McAfee for doing what he's doing right now, and congratulations to you too. All right, man. I appreciate questions it. will come later. My yeah. pleasure, believe me. I give you another option for questions if you want. Yeah. Um, play, players, when they look over the material, they may have some questions. <coughs> Excuse right. me. Um, feel free to, to make a list of questions and send them to me. Okay. I'll respond. I'll, okay. I will I'll, do I'll, that. I'll answer an email back to you. So, so that means I could ask some more questions. In, sure. in, in, due, in due situations, <laughs> um, to all, um, 10 all. Uh, how, uh, how, how do you just walk us through that process? What are some of the best ways to go through um, a tight match, a final? Two all, ten all, uh, what do we do? <laughs> uh, you know, when players, when I, everything depends really on your level and what you're, where you are in your development. At a high level, <clears throat> a player is playing with an overall strategy. Right. And they're going to probably keep to that strategy, except that they're going to change a little bit how they're going about it. In other words, let's say I'm doing, I've done very well, my player's done very well counterattacking serving half long um, to the backhand, okay? 
and or to the middle, let's say, and inviting the player to attack and then strongly counterattacking, and that's worked well. But we're at 10 all. We still want to do that, but we're not necessarily going to use the same serve to do it with. Right. We're not going to go away from what got us to 10 all. Right. But he's expecting that serve. So now it's going to be a little more difficult to do that. But I still want to counterattack. So I probably would do something or have my student do something like a sudden fast serve into the body. Yeah. For and try and get a weak return and still counterattack, but we're changing we're changing the serve and the serve return. We're still keeping the same overall strategy, yeah. but we're changing how we start the point. Does that make sense? Excellent, excellent. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Uh, we have just about two minutes left, right? So maybe just one more one more question uh, with respect to to services. Um, uh, for instance, if a player uh, has a service that is working and is catching the opposition all the time, do we use it uh, throughout the match? Um, how how do we use that that one really good serve that almost scores us that point outright? Well, there's a lot that depends on your opponent. Right. At the lower and middle levels, okay. You can find sometimes a strategy which the opponent has no ability to adjust to. They have a weakness. Right. All right. Maybe you're serving short to the forehand and playing immediately back to the wide backhand, and they're too slow. There's no way for them to <laughs> to adjust. They don't have they don't have the skill to do it. Right. Okay? So against those type of players, you beat them to death with that. You know, your job is to win the match. It's not to look pretty. It's not to <laughs> have your favorite shot. Um, it's, it's you find something and you win. Um, against a better player, you're going to expect some adjustments. Okay. So, again, you may have to change your strategy at some point and, you know, go for a different tactic. Okay, we have but it, it, just it have really 20 seconds left. Yeah, so, go ahead. So, so I will ensure that uh, persons get the questions. Uh, so we just want to thank you for allowing, uh, giving our wealth of knowledge um, in this short space of time. And best of luck to you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. And best of luck to all your students. Yeah, take it. Uh, they got a good coach, so I have, I'll be looking for them. <laughs> all right, fine. Take it. Take care. Bye-bye.